It's a fucking nightmare because it's horrible. It's all look. It is going. It's just all look based. It's all it is. If you want a certain thing on summer, good luck. It's just look. You could get it on first attempt, but it's like getting that. It's like. If you're still watching, I'll get. I'll see if I. I'll try and get the new weapon. Yeah. That smithing village Master Dosan told us about should be just up ahead. Apparently, used to be. This place. Hit it. Give me your That's shit. It. I prefer. I do prefer the first one because this one is a, it's a lot easier. Way easier. This version is. Part of me is way easier than the one. But it would have been nice if they brought the Carter, Crush Carter, to number one. That's with the. When they go glow red, you do your R1 circle. To basic counter it, because that's what gives you. Like the upper edge, in a way. Especially when you're fighting like five different fucking enemies at a time and they're really fucking aggressive. It's like that's the big thing about this game is it's just way too aggressive it's not like souls it punishes you for being aggressive it basically punishes it it basically does it to itself you can literally just stand there in front of an enemy pretty good don't block as soon as they swing you can block because the game's just gonna constantly keep attacking And then obviously if you get it down right, you can just fucking parry him. And the type of build that I've done is... It's alright for everything, in a way. If I paralyze them, that's the reason why I've got it on the sword. That dude pretty much triple damage. So it's like if I paralyze a boss... I do my... R1 circle, since I've got skills on me, well, stats on my weapon, well, my equipment, that gives it even more damage. I do like nearly 60, 70k in one hit. That's if they're paralyzed. Plus, to be fair, I've not even used this parry, well, the parry with square. Okay, just try to run through me. Because now I'm just. I've been doing it so much since they nerfed it. Since they nerfed it from number one, I don't really use that anymore. But that was my go to fucking thing. I loved it. It was fucking awesome. Until they nerfed it badly. And then, obviously, on this, it's like they've nerfed it even more. Pretty much my go to thing, it's just guard breaking. As soon as they swing, guard break, smack them on the floor, and then just fucking stab them. Because even. They've not even thingied yet. Well, they have. And they haven't. They've made it so you can actually get skills. If you fight certain bosses, you can get their moves off them. But they've not made it so you can get the grabs. So like when you're stunned or if you come up behind them you can do a, a different type of grab. Because there is some grabs on the game. What bosses do are pretty fucking sick. And it's like with the first one with Jin Hayabusa. He does his fucking finger grab where he, jump, he jumps up in the area and he spins and then smacks you down. And obviously I fucking farmed him for fucking hours just to try and get it. And then I eventually got it.
Because there's even on this as well, the one thing that makes it so good. This I've got it on me accessories, and, and I think one of me equipment that makes it so. If I get Amrita, well, souls. If I absorb souls, it gives me health back. So pretty much every kill, I gain health back anyway. And the more souls I absorb, the better it is. That's like the go-to thing on Souls games. If you can get something that gives you health back by hit or whatever, it's like a must. I think, I think it's on my accessory. Yeah, life recovery. I'm re, I'm re absorbed. I got 16 health, and then I've got another one. Yeah, 36 on the top. Because there's, there's like even a spell that makes it so. It's actually pretty good for farm when you're just farming Amrita really, just to level up. There's a there's a skill that it pretty much makes it so every time you hit something, it gives you it gives you Amrita. So mixing that with with that ability is just fucking stupid. So the more hits you do, the more your health you're going to get back anyway. Because even one of the new dudes, even the main dude of the DLC looks fucking sick. And one is like best mate, he looks fucking sick. I was thinking about changing it. Changing my armor to look like him. Because he looks like one of them. It's like a vintage fucking pot. And big, large, like Japanese pots. Where it's got design, like blue and white on it. Like a design. It pretty much just like one. It looks like one of them. And the, but the way the armor is, and it's got cracks. And in the cracks, it's obviously gold. And it's, it looks fucking sick. It looks fucking awesome. Because it's a shame with this. I could make my character look way better in gold. It's just the pants. The only reason why I put the pants on because it's just got that little. Because it does go with it a little bit. But with the top, as you see on the picture. You see the actual jacket. So if I put the actual actual set of trousers on, it puts the jacket on. So it obviously, but you can't for some reason they've made it so you can't take it off, and it looks 100% better since it's always the same matching gold. It's like it corresponds with, with with each other. And this is like the new thing that they've done as well. They did it with number one. There's certain enemies that are like fucking proper buffed. And then on this one, it's actually kind of new because the the little symbol it means that they can't be debuffed, but you can take it off them if you can't. Uh, uh, counter fucking crush counter them. it takes the the ability off so then it allows it allows you to obviously hit them with fire whatever and it affects them but for some reason it allows still allows paralyze plus you could technically say that's not really a like a element in a way it's actually a status effect
because I could do technically do more damage. Because the set that I've built, it goes towards another another attack. It's pretty much just like all one circle. But I've only got I've just literally just unlocked it, but I don't really like using it. It's pretty much she just instead of doing a charge, she just does like a bunch of slashes. Because within this set, within the three gauntlets, it does night rain damage 20%. And obviously that's what that is. Where she does all the slices, that's not right. So pretty much if you're coming up against a boss, a main boss, and it's like because they don't really get stunned by hits, you get up since I've obviously made an attack from behind as well, so obviously you do nearly double damage from behind. You get that Nyrain. Do that when they just spawn or something, it fucking tanks. And then if I paralyze him, it pretty much kills him in one go. But then it's like back on number one. I made the fucking parry. Parry and attack from behind build. And it will just fucking kill her. But this, as soon as they, they brought out the first DLC. They killed it. They killed the Perry 100% and they killed it. I, I couldn't believe it. I would just, I will fucking disgust. Generally, I couldn't fucking believe it. Let's come up to the first enemy and I thought, right, let's parry this bitch. Parried him and he literally recovered faster than me. And then obviously he hit me. It's like, mate, they've seriously not fucking done that. And then you can still technically do it, but your opponent has to have no stamina. So when you do the parry, it knocks them out of stamina. Because what it originally used to do, it used to knock them on the floor. You parry them, and then they like on the floor, stunned in a way. And then if you did it right, if you timed it right, you could just go straight into the charge attack and then hit them twice on the floor. And it obviously also gave you the attack from behind bonus as well because they're on the floor. And it thinking and it's obviously thinking that you're hitting them from behind. Literally within the parry, the love tap. I used to do like nearly 100k damage on the parry alone. And if they somehow survived that, they obviously weren't going to survive the next swing because I, I used to do like 140. But then as soon as they fucking nerfed it just went out of window same again out there for fucking hours but when I didn't when I was moving it was mainly when I when I moved and I didn't have no internet I was just constantly just playing this fucking number one over and over again just farming shit just to make that build and then fucking DLC comes out and they just kill it I think the main reason why everyone liked Reach is because it, it felt a lot like number one. And it was like, you felt like a human as well, in a way. So that's when you brought the whole executions and whatever into it. Also, I'm calling it right now on Halo Infinite. There's going to be an Easter egg on the game where you can get the higher booster armor. Calling it. Yeah, gonna be good. 
give it like a destiny feel in a way where it says obviously they're going to be updating the game so it's like it's going to have seasons and shit bring new stuff to it I think it would actually work quite well to be fair if they actually did like a RPG type Halo. <laughs> I was saying that, it's just fucking Destiny. Because obviously Destiny is just Halo. But it's an RPG. And you can obviously tell they're going to make it like when you're playing through the game, you're going to unlock new abilities and shit. <laughs> kind of like Halo Reach in a way. You'll be playing through the game and then you go to a certain point and you've unlocked Jetpack or you've unlocked this bubble shield. The new, well, the new shield that you've got just throw down. Pretty much replace this stuff. That's pretty much just replaced that one little shield off of number three. That drop. I don't know what, I can't remember what it's called. Hey, if they made that a thing on fucking Halo it's saying it'd have been nerfed in a fucking second. Fucking running around with an energy sword with a fucking shield. One it fucking KO sword with a shield that can protect. <laughs> oh yeah. Good one. Yeah, because even when, I think it was, when Halo 3 got released for PC, they actually discovered a new skull on it as well. And it actually makes it so you can fly. Can't remember where it was called though. I think it was more of a jetpack, it was like a super jump and then like you could glide in a way because someone put up a video up on it since I've seen it on Tech Games that he had the gravity hammer and they were just jumping up in air just smacking up fucking banshees and shit in the sky but 
To be fair, talking about it's put me in the mood to play it. That's what made Halo 3 campaign so good as well. Is when they, well, the scores weren't introduced on there because they were on number two. But because the way Halo 3 campaign was, it was just so cool fucking running around trying to find them. No. It was always kind of cool though, fucking challenging you sent to fucking assassinate someone. Fucking far, quite high.
And that was pretty much the game mode that nearly every fucker played. Because it was a fucking good game mode. Give him a good love tap. compared you with the same skill. Yeah. Layer. Killerman.
Whoa, fucking everyone's fucking Coming after me. Probably, you know, I'll be to be fair. Ah, I don't even think they'll even bring that for for PC.
that's just standing there, keeping my finger on L1, but does it block? Think. I think I'll do this demon mission, well, this demon scroll, picture, whatever. And unfortunately, I'll come. I'm gonna come off after it. Since I've got work in the morning. <laughs> 